Dick Cheney is continuing to do a media tour to talk about Iraq because our media sucks baboon dicks. So listen to him lie and warmonger. You wrote in your op-ed, rarely has a U.S. president been so wrong about so much at the expense of so many. But a lot of your critics, left right. and right, say that you are the one that has over and over again been wrong on Iraq, and they point to statements like these. Regime change in Iraq would bring about a number of benefits to the region. We will, in fact, be greeted as liberators. I think they're in the, in the last throes, if you will, of the insurgency. Now, Rand Paul, pointing to things like that, wrote in the Wall Street Journal also, many of those clamoring for military action now are the same people who made every false assumption imaginable about the cost, challenge, and purpose of the Iraq war. They have been wrong for so long. Why should we listen to them, listen to them again? Your response? With all, all due respect, John, I was a strong supporter then of going into Iraq. I'm a strong supporter now. Everybody knows what my position is. There's nothing to be argued about there. But if we spend our time debating what happened 11 or 12 years ago, we're going to miss the threat that is growing and that we do face. Rand Paul, with all due respect, is basically an isolationist. And you write, President Obama seems determined to leave office ensuring that he has taken America down a notch. In this op-ed, you also suggest the president is a, a fool. That, that was the word you used. Only a fool would, uh, would take the, the approach he's taking in Iraq right now. It, it almost seems like you're accusing the president of treason here, saying he's intentionally bringing America down a notch. Now, my reference didn't uh, refer just to Iraq. It referred to the fact that we've left a big vacuum in the Middle East by our withdrawal from Iraq with a no-stay-behind agreement, by the commitment he made just a couple of weeks ago that we're going to completely withdraw from Afghanistan with a no-stay-behind agreement. Uh, we create a vacuum, and it's being filled. And today it's being filled by, IS, uh, by CC from uh, Syria. It's being filled by their attempt, obviously, to take over all of Iraq. Uh, but it's also being filled by places like Pakistan, where the Taliban uh, have just launched a major attack on the Karachi airport. Um, the, the scope of the problem, in part, is based upon an unwillingness by the president to recognize we have a problem. They're still living back in the day when they claimed we got bin Laden, terrorism problem solved. That wasn't true then. It's even less true today. The threat is bigger than it's ever been. The danger of nuclear proliferation in the hands of terrorists is bigger than it's ever been. We need to dramatically reverse course on our defense budget. We're decimating the defense budget, not al-Qaeda. We need to go back to a two-war strategy, not the one-war strategy that he's put in place. I can't believe he just said that. He just came at it and admitted it. We need to go back to a two-war two strategy, not a one-war strategy that he put in place. Well, thank you for admitting that uh, you're, you want a policy that roughly negative 37% of the American people would agree with. It's a good thing that we live in a democracy and we could vote your punk ass out and people just like you out when you say stupid shit like that. See, this is why Dick Cheney, you have to understand, he is a deeply dangerous man. Because in his heart, he's a fascist. In his heart, he's an authoritarian. And this all goes back, remember, there was an interview that happened when him and Bush were still in power, and they basically asked him, well, don't you feel weird or bad about the fact that the overwhelming majority of the American people, you know, are still in favor or want to get out of Iraq and they've wanted uh, to get out of Iraq for a while? And you know what his response was? So... When confronted with the information that pretty much all of America wanted out of Iraq, he said so. That's not the way the country works, son. And then when he says, well, the threat is bigger than ever. I mean, that's why we need to do intervention, because the threat is bad. Jihadists, Al-Qaeda, yada, yada. Yeah, the threat is the worst ever because of your policies. You broke the Middle East. You have to understand something, man. Because of neoconservative policies... We've created a whole new generation of Taliban fighters, Al-Qaeda fighters, uh, ISIS fighters, Al-Nusra Front fighters, Al-Shabaab fighters. I mean, the list goes on and on of all these different fundamentalist Islamic groups and terrorist groups. And the reason why that is, is when you kill somebody's aunt or uncle or nephew or cousin or brother or father or whatever, 
You know what happens? People who are otherwise moderate and either don't have an opinion on the United States of America or they're fine with the United States of America, they go, oh, okay, I get it. That's the enemy. They killed my dad. So you have further radicalized them because now they pick up an AK-47 and they want to go fight you. Okay, before that wasn't the case, now it is. What do you expect to happen when you kill well over 100,000 civilians in Iraq? You kill a lot more civilians in Afghanistan. You have 900 military bases around the world. You do drone strikes in Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia, and you get all these civilians. You know, 98% of the time, drone strikes don't get top Al-Qaeda officials. There was a study that showed that. So, look, it... You, you are the problem, Dick Cheney. Yes, there, are, there were uh, uh, Muslim fundamentalists. There always will be. Um, they certainly existed before 9-11 happened. They certainly existed before we started the war on terror. My claim is not that you created them out of thin air, like somebody as silly as Alex Jones would say. My point is you made it worse because you gave the recruiters an argument that, oh, you will be defending your homeland to fight the enemy, which is America. A couple other things I wanted to bring up. He referred to ISIS as CC. I don't think that's just a silly little gaff where he, you know, had a brain fart. I think he's an idiot. I do. I don't think Dick, Ch Dick Cheney knew about ISIS uh, before the recent story about what's happening in Iraq. I don't think he did. You know, I, we knew, but we were talking about ISIS all the way back to when everybody was scrambling to try to get involved in the Syria war. And I said, no, no, don't do it. It's none of our business. There are a lot of good rebels, FSA being one example, secular. They just want to get their country back from Assad. But there were also uh, jihadi rebels, okay? Al Nusra Front being one of them. And we brought up ISIS as well, okay? So it, I don't think he knows. And Sisi, you know who Sisi is? That's the new leader of Egypt. Sisi has nothing to do with this. And, and then when he says, well, look, we left a vacuum in the Middle East, which is why we need to go back in. No, no. You created the vacuum by taking out Saddam Hussein, dippity. The problem was that you created the vacuum in the first place, and now your solution is the same thing that caused the problem. Let's stay there forever. I could go on and on. I really can. But the final thing I'll say here is, this is the same guy who said oil would pay for the war, we'd be greeted as liberators, they played some of the things he said there, you know, uh, we'll only be there a few months, it'll be a democracy, Iraq will be a democracy, they flew the mission accomplished banner while Bush gave a stupid speech, then we proceeded to stay there for another 10 years, okay? You were wrong about everything, your opinion isn't legitimate anymore. Which is why he has to say, don't debate about 12 years ago. Right, because you were wrong about everything. And that's relevant to the discussion today. 